Maybe to give this channel a boost. Maybe I should join the Axe Gang. Might be nice. Kung Fu Hustle, released in 2004 and is directed by Stephen Chow, who has also directed such films like From Beijing with Love, Forbidden City Cop, King of Comedy, and The God of Kukre. And this film is starring Danny Chan, Yen Hua, Yen Kyo, Eva Hyang, Leon Si Lung, and Stephen Chow himself. Yeah, I guess he was just too bored sitting behind the camera directing the dang thing, and he decided to step in front of the camera and kick everybody's ass. And the reason why we're talking Kung Fu Hustle today, other than it's just an amazing, hilarious action comedy. It was also a PayPal recommendation from two of my biggest supporters on this channel, Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle. You sent this along with a huge bundle of movies that you recommended, so I can't thank you enough. I have only watched this movie one time before, and I believe I picked this movie up, like, the physical copy free. I believe I purchased Top Gun at FYE, and the deal was, hey, if you buy this movie, you get another one free, and this was the only one that was in the bundle with it that I was like, hey, that I've heard good things and I want to check it out, so if it's free, why not? It is 1940 Shanghai, and low-life crooks Sing and Bone are aspiring to be a part of the notorious Axe Gang. So they pick a fight with the landlords and residents of a local rundown apartment complex that unbeknownst to them is housing several retired kung fu masters. And after many small squabbles, the actual Axe Gang gets involved, and everyone ends up fighting each other, and it's one hell of a rompous time. And it's a very cat and mouse like story so the good guys affect the bad guys and then the bad guys get pissed and take out the good guys and then more good guys come in and take out the bad guys and then the bad guys recuperate and they get another like huge ass bad guy to come in and take out the other like badass good guys and then another badass good guy comes in and takes out that bad guy and it's it's all just building on each other it's all reaction and reaction it's science and it's good storytelling however you know, the film ends with the good guy overcoming the bad guy if we're following the pattern of this movie. So who's going to be the next bad guy to come up and defeat the ultimate good guy? Or I guess is the ultimate good guy just the ultimate guy in general? Who knows? I think this movie is actually deeper than what people think it is. But even if you're not getting a lot from it, I believe everyone out there who has seen this movie just loves it to death because it's hilarious, it has a lot of action in it, and it's just a lot of fun. The story, the characters, the director, everyone involved is not taking themselves too seriously. This is a love letter to the old 1970s martial arts kung fu films from China, and it's showing respect to them, but it's also showcasing the whole kung fu film style to a brand new American audience like myself. I remember the first time watching this thinking, what the hell am I watching? Because out of nowhere, the landlady is like Speedy Gonzalez, and she's running around like the Flash, and she's has the lion's roar, and she's yelling, and basically she's Black Canary or Banshee, and then other people start running, and it's like a Roadrunner cartoon, and then it just popped into my head. Oh, this is a live-action cartoon done in the kung fu film style. Oh. Now, could I tell you what the 1970s kung fu film style is? Absolutely not, because my knowledge of that is just... Like, slim to none. But I can appreciate a really fun time and a really fun story, and this movie has that. And typically when I watch foreign films, I don't like to watch it with the English dubbing over top of the actual language and the actual actors speaking the dialogue there. But I think the over-the-top... English dubbing of this movie just added to the ridiculousness and to the comedy of this movie. I also love how the story is talking about the different styles of fighting and martial arts that are in this film, and how important the techniques that are being used feeds into who these characters are, and who is beating who, and how so-and-so is showing respect to the other person because that person is a master of this old ancient style that no one has learned for several years. And you're like, oh, Krang style. Oh, Toad style. I haven't seen that in a millennia. All these different animal styles. Like, this movie's just fun. And the fight choreography is fantastic. They incorporate a lot of silly, ridiculous CGI visual effects in here. When Sing is just using his palm, just this big palm imprint goes into the side of the building and it just knocks everybody out. 
hilarious. But I also like the fighting and choreography in here of the positioning of your body and the stances that you need to do in order to counter and block certain punches and kicks. It's not all about fists and fury, it's about turning your body and moving your body and absorbing the energy and absorbing the power in a certain way to use it to your advantage. I like that. I like fighting movies that don't always rely on fists and legs. They use their whole body and they use their whole spirit in fighting the evil people with hilarious English dubbing over it. It's fantastic. I could definitely see, though, people having no idea what this is, or maybe they're not action people popping this thing in if their friend is making them do it, and within the first 10 minutes going, what the hell am I watching? This is the stupidest thing I have ever seen before. I totally understand that and see that happening. But for someone like me, who loves martial arts and loves action-adventure films, and just loves seeing actors and just a whole film crew just having a ton of fun, this movie is the movie for me. This thing is so much fun. If you could just sit back and relax and go along with the silly cartoonishness of the movie, you're going to have an amazing time. And if you're still not convinced, you could see if you've seen the recent MCU film Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, a lot of influences from Kung Fu Hustle made it to that movie. The actual Ten Rings and how that's used in battle and in fights, that went along in there. In Shang-Chi's apartment, you can see a poster for Kung Fu Hustle in there. So hopefully, with that movie coming out, it introduces this film to a whole new generation of fans of action films and martial arts. I'm going to give Kung Fu Hustle Hustle four and a half out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next. And the next one, again, is another PayPal recommendation from Mr. and Mrs. Rusted Beetle. This was a part of your bundle. And actually, they set in a, a, a couple of movies, a set of movies that I'm supposed to watch back to back. And the first one here, it's from a couple of the minds from Monty Python called A Fish called Wanda. A movie that I had always heard about. I have never seen it before, but I know John Cleese is in it and Jamie Lee Curtis. I've seen a couple of clips of the other guy from Monty Python. He has like a patch over his eye and he has a stutter and he can't speak what John Cleese is trying to get out of him. So I no idea what it's about. Always meant to see it and we're going to finally check it out next time. So guys, if you've seen Kung Fu Hustle, what did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across because of this video, then comment below and let me know what you thought about it. And as always, if you like what you see here, if you like my take on movies, then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell. See you all the next time I release my next movie review. So guys, I will see you next time with my review of a fish called Wanda. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.